So over here, I've given you three vectors, 147, 258, and 369, and I've asked you to find a linear combination of these vectors such that the resulting vector is 0, 3, 6. So if you think you know what this question is asking you and believe that you can attempt a solution, pause the video and go ahead and try doing it and come back when you think you've got an answer to check your work. Otherwise, I'm obviously going to go over the solution, so go ahead and watch for that. So before watching this video, you should know that I plan to make videos covering the entire undergraduate linear algebra curriculum. So make sure that you subscribe to my channel and turn notifications on, and you'll know when I post a new video that will correspond to the concepts you're covering in class. Also, I plan on making review videos that cover these topics at a faster pace. Check my channel if I've released those already, because that will be useful to you if you already know this concept and you don't have to sit around with a more in-depth explanation and you should get the content across faster. Okay, cool. With that, let's get back into the video. So before we solve this problem, we need to learn what a linear combination of vectors actually is. So I think that this is best illustrated by an example. Over here, I have the vectors x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, z2, and x3, y3, z3. I'm taking a linear combination of these vectors with coefficient c1 in front of the first vector, c2 in front of the second vector, and c3 in front of the third vector. This linear combination, and the reason we call it a linear combination is because all of these terms right here are just going to be real numbers, and these are just vectors right here, so we can call them linear combination since there's no squared or cube terms here. We simply add all of these vectors together, the vector of c1 times this vector, plus the vector that results from c2 times this vector, plus the vector that results from c3 times this vector, we'll get a new vector, and the new vector we get is called the linear combination of these vectors. Now, that might be a little bit confusing, so I've gone ahead and created an example here where I want to try and find any linear combination of the vectors 1, 2, and 3, 4. So, we can find the linear combinations of any set of vectors as long as they have the same dimension. This is two, this is three dimension. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to find the linear combination of the vectors where c1 is equal to 1 and c2 is equal to 2. And there's only two vectors, there's only two coefficients. So that would look like this. Here, once again, like I said, c1 is equal to 1 and c2 is equal to 2 since these are just real numbers and we're adding two um, coefficients multiplied by two vectors together we'll get a third vector which over here will 1 times 2 plus we're gonna have 1 plus 6 which is 7 and the denominator we're gonna have 2 plus 8 which is 10 this vector right here, 7, 10, is what we call a linear combination of the vectors 1, 2, and 3, 4. Once again, because this is very important, I just want to reiterate, all we really did here is multiply the first vector by C1 and the second vector by C2. Since C1 and C2 are just real numbers, we get a third vector, which is 7, 10. We can find the linear combination of any set of vectors as long as they have the same dimension. Here the vectors have dimension 3, here the vectors have dimension 2, and in the example we're about to do, the vectors will have dimension 3. So let's go back to the problem that I wanted to solve. Over here, I've given you three vectors, 1, 4, 7, 2, 5, 8, 3, 6, 9, and I want you to find the specific linear combination of these vectors that gives the resulting vector 0, 3, 6. So let's just write out what that means in math, like in mathematics terms, so it's a little bit clearer to see what we're actually doing here. Here we'll have C1 times 1, 4, 7 plus C2 times... 2, 5, 8 plus C3 times 3, 6, 9, and we want to try and find a specific linear combination of these vectors that gives us 0, 3, 6. So all we're really trying to do here is solve for C1, C2, and C3. Because if we know what C1, C2, and C3 are, then we essentially have the linear combination of these vectors that give us 0, 3, 6. Here, C1 was 1, C2 is 2. So if the problem asked us, find the specific linear combination of these vectors that give you 7, 10, then you would say that, well, that this is the linear combination right here. C1 is equal to 1. 1, c2 is equal to 2, 
And if we add those two vectors with that specific linear combination together, we're going to get 7, 10. Okay, so now the question becomes, how exactly do we find C1, C2, and C3? So the first thing that might come to your mind is let's just try plugging random numbers in and see if it works. But that can, in most cases, that's not going to be very easy. In some cases, the linear combination is really easy to see that you can just plug in random numbers and you get the correct linear combination. For example, if only one vector was required to create this vector and C2 and C3 were just zero, then we'd be done. For example, um, if we had the resulting vector as 2, 8, 14, and this is just an example, this is our resulting vector here. That was a very bad 8, I apologize. Okay, if our resulting vector was 2, 8, 14, and we want to use these vectors to try and find this resulting vector, well, it's kind of clear because if we make C1 equal to 2, then we already have this vector, so it's just C2 and C3, we don't even care about them, they're just 0. So, in this situation, it would have been incredibly easy to see the resulting vector, but with 0, 3, 6, it's a little bit more difficult. It's not as straightforward. So you could try and experiment with different numbers, but in this case, I don't think it would take you very far. In fact, I probably couldn't do it with numbers. Okay, so then how do we exactly approach this problem? Well, the way we do it is we construct a matrix and we try and find the row reduced echelon form of that matrix, and that will yield us the specific C values that give us this specific linear combination. So I'll show you what I mean here, and it's best illustrated by example because if I'm just speaking, it doesn't make much sense. So we need to construct a matrix that has all of these column vectors in it. So the first column vector, which is represented by the coefficient C1, will contain the terms 1, 4, and 7. The second column vector, which represents the term C2, will contain the terms 2, 5, 8. The third column vector, which contains the terms associated with C3, will contain 3, 6, and 9. Now, you might be wondering, how is this associated with C1, C2, and C3? Well, here, if we go ahead and add another vector, let's say that contains, that actually contains the terms C1, C2, and C3, I want you to go ahead and carry out the matrix multiplication between these two matrices. Pause the video and go ahead and do that. If you can't, I'll link the video where I covered matrix multiplication in the top right corner so you can go back and see it. But essentially, when you multiply out both of these matrix, all you'll end up getting is this exact equation right here. So all we really have here is a system of equations where all of this is going to equal 0, 3, 6. This should look very familiar to you. We've already covered it in a bunch of videos. Um, if you think about it really, this is just our matrix equation AX is equal to B from the last video. Um, if you haven't watched that, I recommend that you watch that video because I'm going to make a few conclusions from that video here. So go ahead and watch that as well. So there's a lot of foundational concepts that you need to know before knowing this, but go ahead and watch the last video if you're a bit confused here. So all we have really here is the matrix equation AX is equal to B, and that's a really good thing because we already know how to solve AX is equal to B. We just have to solve for X, and we've already done that before. So let's go ahead and do that. We essentially, I'm just going to go back and explain what we just did in case you're a little bit confused. We, since this is just a linear combination of vectors, we can take a matrix where each column represents C1, C2, and C3, and multiply it by a column vector that contains C1, C2, and C3. Once we carry out the column, the matrix multiplication, we're going to end up getting this exact equation over here. So all we really have to do is equate this to 0, 3, 6, which is the vector we're trying to find that is the linear combination of these vectors, and we can solve for C1, C2, and C3. Um, which would be in the vector x right here, because it's just a matrix equation like we've already solved in the past. So let's go ahead and do that. So the way that we've solved these, this equation in the past is we just found the row reduced echelon form of this matrix. So R, R, E, F of this matrix right here, and we adjoined it to this matrix right here because this contains the constant terms. So 1, 2, 3 and then we add on 0, 3, 6. So this is the first row, the second row is 4, 5, 6, 
third row is 789. If you don't know Gauss Jordan elimination or how to find the row reduced echelon form of a matrix, check the video in the top right corner. Once again, a lot of foundational concepts. Anyways, I'm just going to do it on a calculator here. So once we find the row reduced echelon form of this matrix, you should get, and one second, let me just check my calculator, you should get the first row to be 1, 0, negative 1, and 2. So once again, to remind you, the first row contains the entries of C1, second row contains the entries of C2, third row contains the entries of C3. If you think about it, C1, C2, and C3 are just the variables we're solving for. So this should make even more sense now, because if you remember in the previous video, here we had the variables x1, x2, x3, or x, y, z, and like the even older examples. All we're doing here is solving for the variable C1, C2, C3, and when you carry out this matrix multiplication, you'll get this right here. So it makes sense that the answers we're going to get are the solutions for C1, C2, and C3. So 1, 0, negative 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, negative 1. I'm just reading off the reduced echelon form matrix. And then the last row is just zeros, which means we probably have a free variable. So let's go ahead and identify the free variable. The first column, C1, well, it has a leading one right here. So it's, C1 is not a free variable. C2 has a leading one right here. But C3 doesn't, so C3 is a free variable. Let's write out the solutions, just like we've done in the past multiple times. So Let's start with C3 because that's our free variable. We always write a free variable first. C3 is equal to T, where T is some real number. C1 is equal to, well, we're going to have 1 minus T is equal to, t, or C1 minus T is equal to 2. So C1 is going to equal to plus T, where T is a real number. And C2 is going to equal, well, we have t, um, C2 is equal to 2t, um, C2 plus 2t is equal to negative 1. So C2 is going to equal minus 1 minus 2t, where once again, t is some real number. I didn't have to write it twice, but I just want to remind you that t is the free variable, so I did anyways. Okay, so we have our three solutions, and now um, I would be wondering, if I were you, like how... In God's name, does this combination give us the linear combination that we're looking for? Like, we have a bunch of t's flying around. These t's are free variable. What do we do with that? Well, if you remember, all t represents is any real number. So we can substitute any real number into here, and we'll get a linear combination of these vectors that will give us 0, 3, 6. So let's go ahead and substitute t is equal to 0, because that's the easiest, at least to me. t is equal to 0. So if we do that, we're going to get that C3 is equal to 0, since C3 is just T. C1 is equal to, well, we're going to have 2 plus 0, so that's 2. And C2 is equal to minus 1, because minus 1 minus 0 is just minus 1. So this is a specific linear combination of our vectors that should yield us with 0, 3, 6. So I'm just going to write that down, what, exa what a linear combination, this linear combination means. So we're going to have 2 times the vector 1, 4, 7 minus the vector of 2, 5, 8. And then since C3 is just equal to 0, we don't even have 3, 6, 9 part of our linear combination. And this is going to equal 0, 3, 6. So this equation does hold true. You can go ahead and check this for yourself. You get 2 minus 2 here. And you're going to get 8 minus 5 here, which is 3, and 14 minus 8 here, which is 6. So this linear combination does hold true. And if you really want to, you can check this to be true with different values of t, like t is equal to 1, t is equal to 2. I'm not going to, but that's essentially how you use um, a set of vectors to find a linear combination of those vectors to be something that you're given. I just wanted to thank you for sticking around until the end of the video. It really does mean a lot to me. If you have any questions, you're welcome to leave a comment and I'll try and respond as quickly as possible. On screen, you should see a link to a playlist containing every single one of my individual linear algebra videos that I made so far and the ones that I would have made in the future. So go ahead and check that out. You should also see my last video. So if you're a little bit confused in this one and want to see the previous concept, you can click on that. And finally, you should see a subscribe button. And if you want to be notified for my future videos,
and also wanted to tell me that you enjoyed this video, you can do that. Okay, cool. So that's it, and until next time, bye!